All right. Uh, I want to talk about machine learning tonight. I am really interested in this subject, and I found a nice article about it, and uh, I decided to do a presentation. Uh, in particular, it's, it's a detail, actually, uh, very detailed. It's not like a general talk about the machine learning. It's more about, uh, actually, a specific algorithm that's written in JavaScript, and it's about um, text classification. Uh, text classification is uh, basically classifying or grouping a text based on a um, certain uh, like label. For example, you might have, um, uh, you might decide to label a text as a spam or not, or you might decide to label it as a text in English or text in uh, another language. And um, when we look at the text, what we actually are being focused on is uh, the, uh, the words in that text. We don't care about the punctu punctuation marks. So what we do in order to implement this algorithm, we simplify the text by making it all lowercase and uh, removing the punctuation marks and uh, also any duplicate words. So we are not interested in how many times the word is showing up. We're interested in if it shows up at all in that text. So I'll get in more details. It might sound abstract a little bit right now, but um, just bear with me. So uh, what we basically do in my case is I want to classify a text in three categories based on the language it, it's in. In my case, it's English, uh, Spanish, or French. I could basically choose any language I want. Those are really popular languages, so that's why I have those. And uh, that's, that's the classification that I'm using. And you can have different, like I mentioned, you can have different type of classifications. You can have... Uh, Classifying an uh, email as a spam or not, or you, can, uh, or you can classify if a text is written by a male or female, the age of the person that written the text. There's like specific things that can tell you how old was that person. <coughs> and also you can have sentiment classification for reviews of movies or books, you know, positive or negative uh, review. And, um, and the last one in this list here is the one that I'm focusing on. That's the uh, classifying the text based on the language. So it's a little bit of a probability uh, going on in this algorithm. So uh, if you like probabilities, you probably heard of Bayes' base theorem. Uh, those who had taken any probability courses probably definitely, I'm pretty sure they, they covered the base theorem. It's the foundation for the conditional probability. So the, the base theorem is used in this algorithm. And uh, the idea is basically to give you the probability that a text is English or Spanish or French given a particular word. So now, there's a very subtle distinction here between having a text being English, French, or Spanish given a word versus having a particular word given a text, an English text, for example. So the, this subtle distinction, the, the, the base theorem basically takes care of this, and it gives us the probability that we want, which is probability of a text being, in particular, a language given that word. So in this case, I, the formula is basically, um, it's on the screen. You can see it and I pretty much uh, noted what all the symbols are. It's, it's just the probabilities of the different events, the event that the text is in English. In this case, uh, event B is that the word is today. And um, probability of A given B, that's the probability that the text is in English given that the word is today. That's what we are looking to find out. Uh, and the formula is um, just multiplying the probability that the word could be today given that the text is in English times the probability that the text is in English divided by the probability that the word is today. So this is the formula that's used in the algorithm to come up with that probability. And um, I mentioned something about the, um, <coughs> why it's called naive, by the way. Yeah, that's interesting. It's, it's called naive because it does not um, consider words in sequence. It's basically considered every word as independent, uh, just on its own which is, um, it's naive, right? Because if one word is English, most likely the other one will be English too. They're kind of related. We have three English words. The fourth one, it's not likely to be Spanish. But this algorithm called naive base, it does not care about any words before or after. It cares just uh, for the words, uh, for the current word that it's looking at, which actually works pretty well with the algorithm. It yields pretty good results. And um, of course, it could be refined, so you can look at two or three more words. But in those cases, you have to use more training text to train the algorithm. 
just because you have different um, more possible cases. And again, the subtle distinction here with an example, uh, it's the, the, the word bonjour, bonjour, it's a French word, right? Good morning, right? So that word, if you look at that word, you'll say that it's a French, it's, you look at that word, it's 100% likely that you'll find it in a French text, right? But then the probability flips a little bit and it's much lower when you, when you are looking at the probability that the, the text is uh, English or French given that you have that word. And uh, that's, that's not 100%. Uh, in, in this case, I have bonjour. I'm, I'm glad to have you all here. So the text is definitely English text, but you have bonjour. So if you just look at this probability, the first probability, probability of bonjour given French text, it will be 100%. So we'll say, oh, this, this, this text got to be a French text, but it's not. So using the base, form, uh, uh, base formula, you, you find the right probability, which is the probability of uh, English or French or Spanish given that word, and it won't be 100%. When, when, you, when you put the, the inputs in the formula, it, it's less than 100%. And we'll see that uh, later on here. Um, uh, one, the, the basically, the, why this uh, base uh, formula is used is, is like they say, that it decorrelates the number of times a word is seen in a given language from its statistical importance. Like in the case of bonjour, you see it all the time. But the same thing with A. A is a word. It's found in many languages, likely to appear in all languages, 100% English language, but it could be a French text that has A, and it's not an English text, right? So that's, that's the, the key kind of subtle uh, difference. And um, I, I guess I have the example here with, um, with A. And um, like you, you can see, that, that that's the base formula right there, probability of English given A. You replace all the probabilities with, in my case, that's a naive assumption that there's a one-third probability of all these three languages, uh, which in our case works because we, we pro we're going to test all three texts, so it's equally likely that we're going to get all three. So replacing that from 100%, it comes out to 33%. And it makes intuitive sense because, come to think of it, if it shows up in all these three languages, it's kind of like, you know, it's one-third chance to be in Spanish or, or, or English or French. Um, okay, let's see. Now, the algorithm has two phases or two stages. The first one is the training, where you're feeding different texts. And in my case, I chose like 50 texts in each of the languages. So you're feeding this text to the algorithm. It breaks down all the words into an array. It puts it, no, no, no uh, punctuation marks, puts it in an array, and marks how many times it sees that word in that text and it knows that the text is English. So you feed the text, you feed the language, and it says, hey, I saw this, or is, or example, three times in this text. And then you feed the next text, and then the next text. So it kind of accumulates this data that we'll use later on to basically make the prediction. Uh, that's, that's the training, so-called training phase. Um, or teaching, I don't know, you can call it teaching, I guess. Um, so, um, yeah, example, 40 times, say the words next appear 40 times in 50 English texts, two times in French text, and doesn't appear in any Spanish. It's all made up. I, I just kind of put something there, just so for example, I mean, maybe it could appear in a Spanish text. Why not? Right? So what we get out of this is like the probability that you can see that word in an English text. So that probability of a next given English or given Spanish, that's what that will give us. So based on this data that we're feeding into the training uh, phase, we're going to get the probability. So in our case, we get 80% probability of next given English text, and 4% um, given French text is zero given Spanish. So we're going to use these probabilities later on when we have the, the actual calculation for base uh, to come up with the probability that the text is Spanish given that word. And again, when we do that, we're going to have a bunch of words. So for each of these words, we'll be like, oh, checking, seeing if this word is there was a probability, and keep going. And we're going to aggregate all these probabilities to come up with one final probability. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, a little example of the code. The code is um, way longer than this. This is just the, the training phase where, again, you feed the text, you feed the language. It takes the, the words, it puts them in an array, it 
puts them all in lower case, replaces any punctuation marks, any uh, spaces, and we want to be, those words to be unique. And then it counts the number of words given the language, and it counts the number of uh, texts that we are feeding. Right? In this case, it will be 50 English, 50 Spanish, 50 uh, French, and how many times we seen that word in that text. Second phase is the guessing. The guessing is basically the calculation using the base formula calculation of the probability. And again, we're using the, the probabilities that we are finding from the training phase to fit into the guessing phase that basically comes with the final result. And um, again, I have a little example here with next, right? So I have next being 80%. So just putting the numbers in the formula, that, that's simple. It's just putting the numbers in the formula. Again, it's one-third probability for each of the languages. On the numerator, you have 80% times one-third, 4% one-third, zero times one-third comes to 28, 28%. In the denominator, you have the probability of next, which comes to be actually, let's see, the probability of next is 28%. That's the denominator. And the probability of uh, the numerator is 0.8 times one third. So at the end of the day, you get 95%. That's the probability. That's, that's not the probability of next. That's the probability of English text given word next. That, that's, that last line is not correct, by the way. <laughs> that should be that the probability of next is 28%. The probability of English text given next is 95%. Uh, now, that's the example of the, the guessing code. Again, it's just figuring out what's the probability of each word, putting in the formula, and coming up with the, with the final probability. And you do have some refinements, refinements for the algorithm, and those are related to a words that you've never seen, that you haven't seen. You might not, in this case, I'm, in this case, there are like uh, five paragraphs for each of the languages, so total 15. And uh, it's very likely that you might see a word that you, it's not part of the, the text that you're feeding. That's why you're adjusting for that. If you haven't seen it, you just keep it. If you've seen it once or twice, not enough, you just you do this weighted averaging where the formula is right there, where you're trying to, to pull it towards 50%. Um, if you haven't seen too many of it. So you say, you know what, you're just going to kind of play, play it safe, be it 50%. And, um, so those are the refinements, more or less, those are the, the two refinements. With, they're related to basically the word not being seen or being seen uh, uh, not, not too many times. And well, there's another refinement that's related to the calculating of probabilities that we're just, we're not working with 0, 1% or 100% or 1% uh, just because we're using the, like, the logarithmic function and you can't just do log of 0. So that takes care of that. It's just a little like, technical detail about the, um, the calculation. The assumptions that we made, again, that's one third of, of each of those languages. In our case, I have three, uh, five paragraphs for each of the texts, and I'm going to check all three. So the assumptions that it's one third, it's fine, but you can use um, a priori probability of, of, of uh, the probability of the language being uh, English, for example, which would be more likely, come to think of it, than any other language. So it won't be one third. Um, that, will, that will have an effect on the final calculation. And um, the more text you have, the more, the more, uh, the, the, the more accurate the, the algorithm will be. Uh, so, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty much a common sense. So now, this, I, the algorithm, the actual algorithm I use, uh, uh, I use algorithm written by this guy, Burak uh, Camber, at his uh, blog. You can check his, uh, his blog. That's where the actual algorithm is. And... Um, I'll give you a quick demonstration of the, of the, actual, uh, the actual algorithm. All right, so now to the left you have the algorithm. It's, it's pretty long. I, it's whatever I discussed, 
just um, a lot more details in related to defining functions, defining variables. But that's the whole algorithm. That's, that's it. At the, at the very bottom, you have the, the training, which is feeding the different text. So five paragraphs each text. You feed that. That's the first part. And the second part is based on the text that I'm going to put in this little box here. It will tell me what language it is. So um, I just let's, let's use, I don't know, New York Times. Looks good to me. I would just uh, pick a random, random article, maybe about uh, Comey, right? Let's get this text here. It's English, I think, right? So get this thing here. Oh, actually, well, let's let's try. Let's start with English, right? <laughs> I guess language. No, ninety-nine percent. Pretty. <laughs> It works. Let's uh, let's try um, let's try Google Google Translate. I'm gonna translate this to to French or Spanish. And um, let's see if it will guess correctly. There you go. That's how it looks in French. All right. Oh, how about that? <laughs> and now uh, the last one is what Spanish. You know, by the way, I, I put Norwegian because, but for some reason, it didn't save in the in the bin, the the JS bin. I did put Norwegian text. I spent like 15 minutes trying to find something. Then I used the Google Translate, and it, it it got it right. It got it right. But I don't have the text there. I just have this English, French, and, and Spanish. So it won't, it won't work for Norwegian. But um, I've tested it, and it, it, it does work. So Spanish. So it, the, for me, the main kind of thing is like use of uh, probabilities in this algorithm. And then the other thing is like how it not that many paragraphs, you can get to a pretty good accuracy of figuring out what language that is. Because literally, we are talking about we're talking about just five paragraphs. And they're not that long. They're not that long. And it, it's pretty accurate. And one thing about it, if I just put a single word, it won't work fine. You have to have a, a, a good you know, paragraph of some words. So yeah, that's it. Thank you.